last night, Sean Hannity laid out what he thinks the United States' approach should be when it comes to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And he did so in a fun conversation with Sean Penn. Let's watch. We're the greatest country on earth. And I think the Ukrainians will win. Western Europe and America needs to supply them with the weaponry to win. That's and right. if they do, they'll be defeating, in my view, evil in our time. And that's following the Reagan doctrine and frankly, the Trump doctrine, even though you don't care about doctrines. You know what the Hannity doctrine is? I'll give it to you quick. If you invade a sovereign country, you you forfeit your right to lead a country and you forfeit your right to live. Meaning Vladimir Putin has forfeited his right to live. You heard him loud and clear, folks. Uh, Sean Hannity believes that George Bush and Dick Cheney should be executed. They have forfeited their right to live. What do you mean? By waging a preemptive war in Iraq uh, under false pretenses, by the way. No weapons of mass destruction. So, wow, uh, breaking news. We're breaking news here, folks. No, you're like implying that, like, when we say that there should be a standard, that we're implying that it should be applied equally to everyone. I don't think that he actually means that, Anna. And <laughs> honestly, like I'm joking, we talk about this from time to time. I think that this is actually, maybe I'm being naive. Feel free to let me know if I'm being naive. I think this is one of the fundamental differences between progressives and everybody else actually. I would say the right, but probably others too. When we express a value, when we advocate for a value, it's because we believe in that value and believe that the world will be best if it is applied as as close as possible to a universal principle, and so you know one of the the cores of certain forms of philosophy that you should have actual standards that you apply as equally as possible to everyone. But obviously, on the right, they don't believe that. Sean Hannity, like, has so internalized that we get to we get to force standards on other people make them live that way that he didn't even feel like he didn't even notice what he was doing in that he didn't as far as i could tell make a case for why uh okay i get that that sounds bad but here's what makes iraq different or vietnam different or god only knows korea di- like he doesn't even feel the need to do that both because he's internalized it but also because he understands his audience uh the the fundamental difference is two part it is both that the person uh saying the value advocating for the value in their case, doesn't mean it to be applied to them. But also, it's the way that it's received by the audience. I have a feeling, I hope at least, that our audience wants the world to move in a better direction. They do not simply want our side to win at all costs, even if it means jettisoning all of our supposed values. But on the right, victory is the that is the foundational goal. Power is the foundational ending that they're moving towards. Yep. And Hypocrisy is a perfectly valid tool to get you there. Open dishonesty is a perfectly valid tool to get you there. And we just try to live in a different way. No, you're you're so right about that. And you used a key word that I want to talk about just briefly, and it's power. Because you're right in that everything that informs the right wing mind is about accumulation of power, is about using power, flexing power. And obviously, there's a lot of negative policy decisions that stem from that kind of thinking, a lot of toxic stuff happening internally you know, with domestic policy and the way that we treat one another. But there's also a downside, I think, in the left not really understanding the importance of power and the importance of thinking strategic. Because look, the thing about the right wing that I'm gonna give them credit for is they not only understand power and want it, They will do anything necessary to get it. And they organize, they are strategic. Sure, especially during the Trump era, anyone that like dares to speak out against Trump will be reprimanded or like just rejected from the party. But overall, generally speaking, you don't see the kind of like nonsensical infighting among the right wing that we see on the left. And it's frustrating because rather than fighting each other, the left should be thinking strategically on how we can work together, despite all the little factions Mm. that may exist, to accumulate power for good, to actually carry out the policies that we want to carry out. But to your point about Hannity and his 
just lack of willingness to even address why Iraq would be different. Just want to remind you all of what Hannity thought about the war in Iraq. This is a video from 2016. Uh, I was a real believer in the Iraq war. I still am to this day. I still feel that there were probably weapons of mass destruction. I, I do believe they were likely moved to Syria in the long lead up to the war. I think that that probably represented the type of weapons that that Assad was using against his own people. When, of course, Obama drew that infamous red line in the sand. 2016, still a supporter of the uh, Iraq war. Still thinks that there might be weapons of mass destruction, John. Someday they're going to find them. Someday. Someday. Uh, yeah, the, the final point I want to make is is about the difference, another difference that you just identified on the right and the left, that they're obviously more unified. And it's not to say that there aren't clashes of personality, there are. But there's, there's clearly less. And I think that we at some point should dive into it. But there's two large reasons why. Uh, one, I think it is that they, their establishment media like Fox News and their independent media, uh, are actually the same thing. Like, there's not the difference between like us and MSNBC. There's clear differences there. Ben Shapiro and Sean Hannity want the exact same things. They may pretend mm -hmm. that there are surface level differences. There, there aren't. They're going for tax cuts. They're going for the same things. So there isn't actually independent right wing media. It is all tied and funded by the establishment. But also, they don't have to deal with former members of their side. There's no like former right wingers like that are now progressives. Not that that I know of. Not high profile because that's not the direction it goes. Because that's not where the financial incentives are. Such People become point. former liberals or post left because they're going toward the money. Sure, maybe they had some leftist values, but they very much like to have a much much larger house. And the way that you get that is by becoming a conservative, uh, being awakened from your progressive delusions. And that doesn't exist on the other side because there isn't money waiting for them over here. Right, right. You don't see anyone getting, I don't know, I guess blue pilled. I don't know if that would make me, I mean, but yeah, the people get red pilled because you're mm -hmm. right. I mean, the incentives are in the wrong place. And yeah. that's how you can see well, all sorts of people morph into, you know, the Dave Rubens exactly. or the Jimmy Doors. Yeah, go ahead. Super fast. You do see see regular people being blue pilled. Regular conservatives tell us that they started watching us and became progressives all the time. But that's because they're being honest. It's not about like seeking profit. When you talk about the media wing, though, there's no there's no honesty. It's all goal driven, and the the money is the big goal.